Final race of the programme, Class 3, 1,400 metres for race number 10. Invincible Fresh uh, heads to the list. He's a two-time course and distance winner this season already. Behind right choice last time out. He's having a great season. He's won three of his four starts. Does come over barrier 14, though, here. Hidden Blitz makes his Hong Kong debut, a two-time winner out of the UK. Uncle Steve, fourth on debut. Behind right choice, a six-pound turnaround with his rival there. Round about third at big odds last time out behind Piggin. Amazing Chocolate jumps off an inside gate here. Barrier three for Chad Schofield. An Irish Vega, zero from nine. Off a rating of 60, he's actually eligible for class four. They take the lightweight here with Benso taking two pounds off as well. Cool team, was well back. Good run from him last time and good few. Been up at Chung Fire Brett. They both return back on the 28th. Lot of no not a lot of noted pace in this race, Andrew. You wonder what they'll do on right choice, who will be the likely favourite. He's drawn in the car park, barrier 14. Um, will they roll the dice and try and take the lead? Smart lead is one that has over raced at the valley not long ago and led that occasion. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a tricky one, this one, speed-wise. Uh, right choices go nicely, though. That's him on the inside. He's won three from four. He's in great form at the moment. Just working from, with Heavenly Thought. Thought it was a good piece of work on the inside from right choice. So he's held his condition nicely. Looks good game of this contest. Uh, here's Uncle Steve. Now, um, he only had the one day one run. He ran fourth, and that was Douglas White's last ride here in Hong Kong. And Berta Rispley will fill those shoes and barrier number one for him. He seems to have come on from that debut run. And roundabout, hit on the chest stuff for him. He uh, he went really well, I thought, his last start. Got back, ran on nicely. Barrier number four for him. He's got Joe Marrera aboard, so expect him to run well. He's well rated at the moment. This mm. All right, that's roundabout. We'll come back and have a look at that run in a moment or so. Let's start off with our favourite, though. Right choice and jockey, Sylvester de Sosa. Last race, uh, right choice, uh, winner of three from four so far. How have you rated his career performance so far? It's good. You know, he's a really nice horse, and I think he go place probably he goes to the next level when he's stepping up. The trip now with of this level could be a bit tricky for him because you know he wants probably the horse he wants a mile or further. So, but Frankie, I think he's another one on him. So that why that's why we keep in the same trip. Gate 14 uh, looks a bit tricky. Yeah, uh, what do you think of that? Yes, absolutely. And you know we're right in the wing, and uh, we just have to see how the race is panned out and we're trying to make the best way home. He looked to relax, and he looks to relax really well in his runs. Is he one of those horses you can probably place anywhere? Not really, because, you know, and probably last time, and I used him too much to be on the pace, and I felt he didn't show me the same turn of foot, you know. But he's a horse who wants to go further. You, can't, you cannot use too much early on, but you cannot be too far back. He certainly seems to be a bit more tractable with the blinkers on, doesn't he? Um, interesting, though, what he said there, because mm. if he can't use him early from that wire gate, there's a real chance he's going to get caught deep here, um, which could be difficult to overcome with all the weight. Yeah, the one good thing in his favour is there's no sort of... a lot of speed underneath him, is there, on paper? You know, there's... It looks... Who's the natural leader? We saw from the speed map a slow speed, so... Mm. He's got the option, I think, to get across. Yeah, it's a good run from Uncle Steve as well. Just for a moment, when uh, mm. Douglas yeah. angled him out, thought it was on, but... Um, We'll get another chance. Cool team, there was loads of money for him. And, um, well, he finished fifth, so they didn't get any back, but it was a big run all the same. Hey, look, you can see him looking for a gap halfway through this race. It didn't really produce itself. It was a half gap there. Once he hit the line, he hit the line very strongly. He thought it was a good run. He's only had the two starts. So, yeah, I've got him in the numbers. I think he's a chance. Yep. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So, with all the money that was there for him, I'll throw him in. Mm. Definitely. Mm. OK, we'll keep rolling those. Still a few more to have a look at, including roundabout angle down the centre of the track here. Rattle home to finish third. Good for you and perfect, buddy well, this, included. This was Paul's long shot on the day. And I, ca I have to say, I, I haven't been a huge fan of roundabout. It's sort of been picky times when you throw him in the tips. But he, uh, I've never seen him move as fluently as he's moving at the moment. Yeah, he's got him going really well, hasn't he? And he came down out in the car park there himself, down the outside rail, and... Hit the line very strongly. Uh, it was a really good run from him. He couldn't quite pick up Pickin or the Beauty Horse, but still, it was still a good run. And he's well rated at the moment, so he's going to have to be a chance on that. Surely. Yeah, he'll be a bit shorter, he will be, on uh, Saturday. Yeah. So uh, he's in for you then, Paul? Yeah, got him in second. I think right choice can get across. So I've got him on top to beat roundabout. Uh, Uncle Steve was a good run uh, last time. And a uh, cool team. We talked about him as well. So two, eight, five, and 6. I'll go exotic, so just in case something goes wrong with the favourite. 2, 5, and 8. Same four, slightly different order. I'll tip round about off the back of that run. It was a massive performance from him. He really hit the line uh, with a screaming finish. 
Uncle Steve, right choice, I think, is vulnerable with the top weight and the wide barrier. Cool team, 8526. I will throw in Invincible Fresh into that trio there. All right. So, Uncle Steve, for me, haven't completely given up on amazing chocolate, though, just yet. Stats, Paul, what are we looking at uh, here? Combination have been read out for. Yeah, dream team, these two, haven't they? Uh, Dennis Yip and uh, Zach Purden. They've had, since December, uh, end of the year, they've had uh, 20 runners for eight wins. Three seconds, three thirds, all of those downgraders as well for a 40% win rate. So a really good uh, stat there with those two. And I think they can add to it with Prince mm. of Gems. He looks really tough to beat. I think he'd be one of the shortest price favourites of the day. He looks right. good. Race five, number one, Prince of Gems. So short price for him. Best bets though? I'm going to go with a horse who's at double figures at the moment. I don't know if he'll start double figures. Uh, if he does, he's cracking better. Speedy King. Should get a nice run just behind the pace. He's had three starts on the all-weather and has won one of them and been placed in the other. So I think we'll get a really good run for our money there. Race six, number one, Speedy King. And at the weights, Green Luck, 114 pounds. Uh, he'll get his opportunity, I think. So uh, that's why I like him over Waikuku, who's obviously going to be tough to beat. But an each way price for race nine, number 12, Green Luck. We'll do the uh, play of the day in race six, though. Speedy King, and with a game player, Emperor and Goldie Flanker finishing off late, one, four and ten. Um, I'm going to go with a bit of value as well. Flying Thunder, race seven, number one each way. If he can posse up and get from the gates well, I think he's a chance of running over them, even with the weight. I think he's a nice horse. Seven one. Corre Rapido in the dirt, or on the dirt, in the class five. Two nine. He's coming back from runs over longer trips, so he should find the line well. I'll take the chance at a price that he can. Um, race one, simple as one, two, three in the QQP. Happy to go that way. All right, I'll have a crack at the favourite here in the last right choice with Uncle Steve, who was fourth on debut. We just saw that six pound turnaround for length and three quarters. Buddy moves from barrier 14 to barrier number one. I'm Berta Rispy in the saddle. And uh, Sonny Speed in the ninth event. Um, he's got to put it all together, but he's a big price. I think he can get involved as well. Uh, why Cooker obviously very hard to beat there. And the player of the day, QQP in the last. Invincible Fresh, right choice, and Uncle Steve. One, two, and five in the last. All right, we're looking forward to the uh, the Saturday program, the two trophy races in that Derby trial of sorts. Before we return to Happy Valley next week, two really good sprints come up, including Music Edition versus Country Star over 1,200 metres. Ooh. That'll be a good race, and a reminder about the simulcast from uh, Macau on Sunday. Yeah, and special stars as well from John Sizer Yard, stepping up to 1,200 metres at Happy Valley too. Shouldn't be a problem, I wouldn't have thought, for him. He's looked well, so it should be, could be a... A night of stars, and of course, uh, as you mentioned, simulcast on Sunday. You'll be looking forward to that, Brett. Seven races on the programme, and uh, yes, romantic touch looking to defend his title over there. All right, well, that's the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Paul, Brett, and the rest of the team, hope we see you charted on Saturday when we will be racing to win.